OPGW was developed as a communication pathway on transmission lines. It also offers protection against faults and lightning. OPGW can be installed using typical conductor and shield wire stringing methods with minor variations. During installations, care should be given to avoid tight bends and excessive tensions that could crush the OPGW's fiber-bearing units. OPGW reels should always be in an upright position and never lain on their sides. To ensure the OPGW has not been damaged, it should be tested prior to and after installations. AFL recommends using the controlled tension stringing method. Because the OPGW reel is not designed to withstand the braking forces that arise during stringing, AFL recommends using a multiple groove bull wheel tensioner. The OPGW reel should be placed directly in line with the tensioner, and the OPGW should be reeved through the bull wheel properly. The tensioner should be located at a 3 to 1 ratio to the stringing block on the first structure and also be in line with the first two structures. Stringing blocks or travelers are mounted on the tower at the OPGW attachment point. Radius blocks, banana blocks, and array travelers should not be used as pulleys due to the potential crushing forces. AFL recommends a pulley with a diameter of 40 times the cable outer diameter at the first and last structures. Straight pulls can use a pulley with a diameter of 30 times the cable outer diameter. AFL recommends the use of an anti-rotational device on all Alumacore, Centricore, and Microcore designs. For OPGW installations, ARDs that attach using dummy swivels may be used, as well as ARDs that attach directly to the OPGW. The OPGW should be installed with a constant tension in order to keep the line clear of the ground or any obstacles while avoiding too much tension, as this could cause damage to the fiber units. Stringing tension should not be greater than 20% of the rated breaking strength of the cable and no more than half of the sagging tension of the cable. To begin sagging the OPGW, a dead end should be placed on the last structure at the puller location. Sagging should be conducted on each dead end to dead end section, working back to the OPGW reel and tensioner location, and a come along or pocketbook grip should be used to tension the cable. Chicago and Quito grips should not be used. Dead ends are used on structures where the OPGW terminates to be spliced, where the line angle is greater than 60 degrees, as well as road, river, and rail crossings. Single suspension clamps are used on structures where the line angle is less than 30 degrees, and double suspensions can be used on structures when the line angle is between 30 and 60 degrees. OPGW should be clipped into dead ends and suspensions within 48 hours of being pulled. To lift the OPGW from the stringing block, attach come-alongs to the cable on each side of the structure and place a hoist on the structure arm. The hooks of the hoist are placed on the come-along and jacked up to pull the OPGW out of the stringing block. The stringing block can then be removed and a dead end can be placed to attach the OPGW to the structure. If vibration dampers are required, they should be placed on the OPGW immediately after clipping in. When cutting the OPGW, a hacksaw type cutter or rotary saw should be used to avoid crimping the cable and damaging the optical units. The OPGW is trained down the structure using downlead clamps. In order to provide enough cable for splicing, the OPGW should extend beyond the bottom of the structure and be looped in coils for storage. To prevent damage, the coil should be fixed on the structure at the splice enclosure location. For future splicing and or maintenance, the splice enclosure may be removed from the structure and brought to ground. This video is a basic overview of the OPGW installation process and should not be viewed as a substitute for written instructions in the AFL OPGW installation manual, your company's own safety procedures. 
the National Electric Safety Code, the IEEE Installation Guidelines for Overhead Lines, or OSHA High Voltage Electrical Regulations. Please contact your AFL representative with any questions about these procedures or any other questions about AFL OPGW fiber optic cable systems.